What's going on you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Waves Weekly, a series I post every weekend where we cover recent news and current events that I believe relate to the markets. These episodes are meant to be more chill, so sit back, grab yourself a drink, let me know what you're drinking. Right now, I'm personally drinking La Colombe coffee. This is the draft latte flavor. These things are absolutely fire. I probably drank in three of these a week for the past like two months now, so I can confidently say that these are my favorite canned coffee drinks. I just get them from Target. If you guys want to go check them out and if you like coffee, cheers to that. You guys, cheers to the weekend. Let's get into it. As always, we'll go over each topic that we're going to be discussing, then we'll dive into each one individually. In front of us, we'll get to the plug at the end. You guys know the deal. But first things first, in terms of articles, remember, you guys, these are more news related. No charts today, all news, all just talking story. Concern over Trump's condition remains high despite doctor reporting improvement. So again, you guys, this is probably the most covered story in the world right now. Biggest news, not only the US, but again, across <laughs> across the entire globe. So there is like almost minute to minute play by play coverage on this. Trump looking good right now again you guys no matter which side you fall on you should wish the best for him you should wish you should you should want trump to kick this thing in the ass all right so let's hope that happens we'll cover this first and then we'll use this to tie in to trump coronavirus diagnosis changes dynamic of stimulus stock so again i mentioned we covered this in yesterday's video and as promised we will so the 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 fact that trump has caught COVID, the fact that he has coronavirus does change the dynamic of these stimulus talks and hopefully will bring just the ability for both the left and right to to come to an agreement and fast and uh trump wants the same thing all right so trump urges this is all breaking this was just today trump urges congress to pass a new coronavirus stimulus and i quote get it done okay so trump wants them to get it done they want them to to resolve their conflicts and get a stim or get a stimulus out get a virus relief package out there so again, you guys, as I've been saying for so long, the stimulus is, in my opinion, the most significant catalyst in terms of a continued market rally. Okay, so this is huge news. This is obviously very relative to the market, so that's why we're covering it. Moving on from there, a little more lighthearted, Dave Portnoy, Mr. Davey Day Trader himself, says he's the most talked about name on Wall Street. Don't doubt it at all. This is a fun article. Um, Barstool Sports founder says his portfolio is up a million dollars. Portnoy says he gave up shorting stocks after an early setback. So I'll read a few paragraphs from here. This is just fun, you guys. This is like, uh, if you guys have ever heard me say the Davy Day Trader when I'm kind of making fun of the retail investor movement, that's where it's from. But keep in mind, you guys, I love Dave Porno. I think he's a great dude, and I, I consider him a mentor of mine personally. Closing out with articles, Coinbase won't allow discussions of politics and social causes at work. If employees don't like it, they're free to leave. So Coinbase, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in, in America, this is actually the, the, um, the platform that I used when I was first getting into cryptos back in like 2016. So I've been, uh, been a fan of Coinbase and Brian Armstrong for a long time. This is a very interesting article and uh, I want to talk to you guys about it, all right? So those are all the articles we're going to be covering today. Um, also, you guys may have noticed a sick new Waves hat. I don't know, again, you guys mentioned this yesterday, but I don't know why I haven't been wearing these hats for the whole time. Um, again, you guys, this this <laughs> this link has been in my bio for so long, and I never I never plug it. I come from a des design background. Many of you know that already. But uh, again, you guys, I'm going to start wearing these Waves hats. Waves hats, part of the Waves family. You guys go check it out if uh, if you want some merch. All right, so do take pride in this merch. There's some shirts as well in there, even a mug if you're feeling like uh, you want to sip some some sip some not canned coffee. So you guys, link in the bio. Go check it out if you're part of the Waves fam. Appreciate you if you check that out. Also, before we get into the news, of course, as always, my portfolio first link in the description, a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio that I update every trading day. With every update, I also send an email newsletter explaining my thoughts. So I take a lot of pride in this portfolio. I take even more pride in the daily newsletter that I send out on a daily basis. Um, if you guys want to, uh, if you guys want to support the YouTube channel, then please check this out. And again, you guys, I put my, I do my best to provide great content in this and make it worth your buck. So go check that out. I appreciate it if you do. Again, first link in the description. If not, no worries though. Let's get into this. So once again, concern over Trump's condition remains high despite doctors reporting improvement. I'll just read through the key points here and then we'll move on to these next articles. CNBC, Noah Higgins done. President Donald Trump's condition has improved since receiving care at Walter Reed Medical Center, so that's that military hospital, after testing positive for the coronavirus. Trump's physician, Dr. Sean Conley, said on Saturday, the briefing raised new questions about when it was known that the president was sick. Um, and I quote, the president's vitals over the last 24 hours were very concerning and the next 48 hours will be critical in terms of his care. A person familiar with the matter told White House pool reporters, we are not on a clear path to full recovery. All right, so... Um, again, you guys, Trump, Trump is, <laughs> his physique is not, uh, he's not in the best shape. 
and uh, that's you, you can't blame the guy. He's an old dude. He's mid seventies. It's an old guy. He's a big dude. And uh, again, you guys, he is he is clinically ob obese. So remember that, you guys. He is like kind of the epitome of a high risk individual um, when it comes to severe symptoms for uh, for COVID. And uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta all wish him the best. Wish him a speedy recovery. He has been tweeting. He has been uh, talking to people. He was talking to Mitch McConnell this morning in uh in one of these later later um articles that we'll look at but uh, again you guys he's still a very high risk individual and uh you gotta get, i mean i'm gonna see what happens here okay so moving on there again we're, we're just gonna kind of tie all these in together quick trump coronavirus diagnosis changes dynamic of stimulus talks nancy pelosi says key points house speaker nancy pelosi said president trump's coronavirus diagnosis could change the dynamic of talks towards a stimulus deal pelosi is engaging in last ditch talks with treasury secretary steve mnuchin as they try to strike an agreement for the 2020 election house democrats approved a 2.2 trillion dollar bill on thursday night while mnuchin has offered a 1.6 trillion dollar package okay so this is important because uh pretty much the argument that she was making in here i, I mentioned this briefly yesterday is that Trump, the fact that Trump now has COVID will hopefully kind of sway the right to to understanding the gravity of this virus. OK, because um, it's it, this is news to nobody. This is this is not my opinion. This is fact is that the, the right, um, the right as opposed to the left definitely have been taking. Um, I'm not saying everyone, but just in general, just in general, I'm generalizing it um, in general, the right has been a little lighter on the virus and the reality of the virus than the left has okay so pelosi was saying pretty much in this article we're not going to read through it anymore but she's pretty much saying that she hopes that now that trump has it now that their figurehead now that the figurehead of the republican party has covid um it might wake them up to again the reality of this virus so moving here again you guys trump urges congress to pass a new coronavirus stimulus get it done key points trump puts pressure on congress to pass a coronavirus stimulus deal telling telling lawmakers to work together and get it done trump's tweet about pandemic relief comes as the president receives treatment for covid 19 at walter reed medical hospital house speaker nancy pelosi and treasury secretary Stu mnuchin are working towards striking a stimulus deal but have se uh, have said they still have disagreements so trump now knows firsthand the reality of this and uh, you can say he's uh, over over the course of this virus over the course of the way he handled this pandemic you could say he played it down you could say whatever you want but now that he has it he I, I can guarantee all of you that he understands the gravity of what this virus is especially once again because he is a high-risk individual he has all the makings all the all the physical makeups for having severe symptoms and um, again you guys even the as his uh as that, that White House secretary or whatever their press that press person was saying, is that his vitals are looking a little troubling. His his vitals are worrisome. Okay, so again, you guys, no matter which side you fall on, wish the best for your president. This is the president of your country, and uh, no one wants I no one should ever want him. No one should ever want the worst case scenario to happen. So keep your prayers up, and uh, yeah, let's hope he kicks this thing in the ass. Uh, moving on from that, again, you guys, just stimulus there. This is a day-to-day -day thing. I'm going to keep you guys posted. I'll probably talk about this even more in tomorrow's um, Sunday Stock Watch. So stay tuned for that. But again, you guys, this is this is just progressing day-to-day, -day and it's exciting. Um, again, it is heavy. It's very heavy. This is a very heavy situation. But in terms of news and in, in terms of things that we can talk about and in terms of things that could potentially impact next week in the markets, uh, it's very, it's very exciting in the sense that there's a, it's almost overwhelming all right so moving on from there again you guys a little get get a little more lighthearted here dave pornoy says he's the most talked about name on wall street barstool sports founders his portfolio is up a million dollars it's pretty impressive i would like to know the percentage change in that not just the number pornoy says he gave up shorting stocks after an early setback uh okay Barstool sports founder Dave Portnoy says he's the most talked about person on Wall Street. Again, I completely agree with that. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Portnoy pivoted from covering sports as Barstool's El Presidente to live streaming himself making stock picks as Davy Day Trader. And I quote, if you told me that uh, this was going to happen six months ago, I would have looked at you uh, like you had 10 heads. It's a funny thing to say. Portnoy said during an interview on the Masters in Business podcast with uh, Barry Ritholtz, and I quote, it's colorful, it's different. I don't think anybody on Wall Street had ever seen somebody like myself, Portnoy said, adding that he was trading with large amounts of money and being very upfront about it. In the early days of the pandemic, Portnoy said he realized investing had the potential to fill the content gap while professional sports was on hiatus. So this is very important to remember, you guys. Remember that Portnoy is a master, me like Dave Portnoy, founder of Barstool Sports, for those of you who don't know, is an absolute media mogul. He's been doing this for the better part of a decade. He knows exactly what he's doing. Um, again, I've I found Portnoy through the pizza reviews and through the day trading. Obviously, that that's what turned me on to him. And this guy, once you start watching this guy, I highly recommend you guys 
if you haven't watched any of Dave Portnoy's content, go watch it. Um, and it's it's I can't imagine any of you who would be watching me would not would not enjoy his content. So definitely go check him out if uh, if you have time to do that. And uh, yeah, that is that. All right. So moving on to the last article, Coinbase won't allow discussions of politics and social causes at work. If employees don't like it, they're free to leave. This is a very interesting article. So moving on, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Silicon Valley based cryptocurrency exchange and brokerage Coinbase, told his employees that he won't stand for politics and the championing of social issues at the office. Armstrong bluntly said that he'll gladly offer severance packages to employees who aren't comfortable with the new corporate policy of political neutrality in the workplace. The chief executive wrote in a letter to employees, life is too short to work at a company that you aren't excited about. Hopefully this package helps create a win-win outcome for those who choose to opt out. His stance runs counter to the climate of many tech companies, a large percentage of Silicon Valley tech companies um, tend to lean left and companies are open with respects and allowing encouraging their employees to get involved with social, racial and political causes. I 100% agree with this. So uh, you guys, if, if you're familiar with this, you may be also familiar with the fact that Jack Dorsey, who's the who's the CEO of founder, CEO of Twitter and uh, and Square Cash App, everything was talking was pretty much talking trash about Brian Armstrong doing this. And I think this is great. Focus on your product. Focus on what you do. Don't try to politicize things. And Again, you like in a, in a workplace where you're trying to get something done, if you bring uh, kind of just the political blunder and, and again, it causes people within your own operations to butt heads even more if you like it's, it's kind of a, a hard situation. Like I have no problem if if outside of work they talk about politics, everyone's entitled to talk about whatever they want. But if you're trying to accomplish uh, a singular goal and you want to do what you're doing and do it to the best of your ability, then I completely agree with what Brian Armstrong is doing here. I followed this guy on Twitter for a long time. I think he's a great CEO. And again, I'm a big fan of Coinbase as a platform as well. So I think this is a great move. I think that so many of these other Silicon Valley companies, these huge tech companies that are public and can't do stuff like this are just kind of bitter that they can't do stuff like this because I feel like a lot of them wish they could just say stuff like, like this. All right, so this is very cool. I, I do recommend you guys go look into this a little more. And uh, again, you guys, I, I really like Coinbase. So uh, as you guys know, I, I'm a Bitcoin bull and a cryptocurrency bull as a whole. So if you guys ever wonder where I personally like to trade trade crypto, it's Coinbase. OK, so that is that you guys, I just realized I forgot to open the tab for the content of the week and I have a book over here as well. So I'm going to go grab that. Content of the week is oh my God, so overexposed. OK, content of the week is outliers this is the book and then the other one is south park pandemic special so <laughs> two two very opposing uh, pretty much opposite ends of the spectrum but two very good things so again you guys i'm gonna focus myself a little bit sorry about that so again you guys i'm just gonna start recommending you books that i've read over the years that i think are worth i've read a lot of books over the years and i'm probably just, i'm just gonna recommend you guys the ones that i personally think are will be the most um helpful to you of course okay so outliers this is this is a classic i'm sure many of you um if, if you're if you're readers i'm sure many of you have read this at this point outliers the story of success by malcolm gladwell this is where the ten thousand hours came from if you guys have ever if you guys are kind of familiar with the ten thousand hours principle it's pretty much the fact that in order to master any skill you need to put in ten thousand hours so um to to a lot of you guys to tie this into trading it's like don't ever expect no matter no matter how much of an edge you think you have like intellectually or um, mathematically even because trading does involve some mathematics and and just uh, the natural ability to, to spot trends and patterns don't think that you're going to be good right off the bat or don't think that you're just going to catch on quick you can get lucky a lot of people get lucky i've gotten lucky i like everyone had like beginner's luck is a real thing but that also gives you gives you beginner's ego and beginner's cockiness and the ability to maintain profitability the ability to maintain green days over years and years, decades is what really matters. All right. And that's why this is a good example. It shows you multiple examples of people who have put in their hours, put in those 10,000 hours that it takes to become a master at your given craft. You guys, and no matter what it is you do, I'm, I'm like, I'm sure so many of you guys, you're, 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 you don't just trade. This is like a pastime. This is a supplemental income, complimentary income to you. Okay. So um, read this, you guys, again, it's just, it's just good. If you have any venture out of a nine to five and i don't want to roast a nine to five in any way that's not the path that i've chosen personally but you guys if you want to go on that entrepreneurial journey if you want to take a step into the direction of whatever you're passionate about and uh things may not be happening as quickly as you want them so th this is this gives you an idea of how to kind of structure structure your journey while also making you not feel bad 
about the fact that you may not be catching traction quickly because so many people who are extremely successful now um, it took it took a long time it took 10,000 hours to get to that point of mastery okay and I can attest to that I had a podcast for a long time all right not super successful this YouTube channel is way more successful I've talked into the mic for so long still not close to 10,000 hours but I'm getting there and I'm getting better every day even earlier in this video you could tell I was stumbling all over the place I've, I've done so much of this already I've done this every day for the past like six months now but I'm still working on it I'm still progressing I'm still getting better at my craft and I will always will be always will be okay so check that out you guys again flip the script opposite end of the spectrum south park pandemic special was probably the best the funniest piece of content i've seen in the COVID area um COVID era i'm sorry so south park i grew up on south park you guys south park is i, I would call this my favorite animated series of all time just because again i grew up on it my dad always watched it always watched it with my pops still watch it to this day still like i was so excited for the pandemic special for the entire like month leading up to it you guys and uh finally watched it it met up to all my expectations the beauty of south park if you guys um some of you guys if you, if you watched extensive amounts of south park you understand the wit and the really clever side of south park in the writing and the production of it but you you really have to watch a lot you guys that's why i say many of you you have to watch ex an extensive amount of south park if you watch one episode you watch two episodes you might think it's super crude which it which of course it is but when you especially the recent episodes they're so good at nailing current events and 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 creating satire around them so take they they really hit on every single stereotype that is out there in the land of covid and the realm of covid like the people who are super cautious the people who don't think covid's real the people who are wearing diaper chin diaper masks and it's just it's so it's so good and it's so brilliant i believe it's brilliant again you guys it's very crude if you have a if you have a soft stomach uh, i would say don't watch it because it's it's uh it's definitely it's definitely offensive it's super offensive but it's brilliant in my opinion so you guys go check that out if uh if you want if you want a good laugh this weekend you haven't already and uh i think we'll call it there you guys so as always you guys drop a comment down below let me know what you think about any of these things let me know what you think about the stimulus let me know what you think about portnoy literally whatever you guys want to talk about always love talking shop with you guys downstairs so i'll catch you down there and until next time you guys always remember take action make waves peace